Good afternoon, one and all. Welcome to Women Runners, showcasing the inspiring journey of women entrepreneurs. This is your host, Yasmin Khan from SME Venture. Uh, today, we have our special guest with us, uh, who is a passionate MBA degree holder, uh, entrepreneur, founder, and MD of Raso Cleaning Products Private Limited, Miss Sonia Shah. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be on this platform and I would love to thank you for, you know, taking the time out. So pretty excited about this. Yeah, thank you. So today through this conversation, we'll get the facts about Raso Cleaning that is India's first vinegar and baking soda powder cleaning products. So starting with my very first question, Ms. Sonia, uh, let me uh, just uh, jump in, into the first direct question that how did this startup idea come, uh, like came into the frame of uh, your career? Okay, so pretty interesting because I had been a banker for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, then I moved back to my hometown, Siliguri, to, you know, help with my family business. And uh, I also went for my NCAD MBA. So a lot of things were done in the span of last, you know, 15, 18 years. It was in 2018, approximately, or I would say early 2019, uh, that I... Uh, was sitting with my sister and we were like talking about you know how most of the cleaning products that you get in India are not effective and she suggested that why don't I use baking soda and vinegar to clean and actually I tried that and I was amazed with the cleaning properties because till then we were using the conventional products right you are aware of the brands that are available in the market I was so intrigued with the idea that I decided to do a bit of research at my end. You know, are there products that are available that use these kind of formulations? And surprisingly, I didn't find, I, I didn't find any company in India for sure. So I, uh, I and you know, it's, it's interesting that at that moment I decided that, look, I'm as it is someone who's passionate about keeping the house neat and tidy. So why not start a company uh, that will create products that really work for Indian homes, right? Compared to global homes, you know, we face a lot more dirt. You know, if you go to the US or the uh, or, or any country in Europe, you're not gonna face that much of dirt, dust, soot, et cetera. But India, you know, we, we require products that are a bit more effective. So I uh, came across Dr. Ramchandran, who's an ex BSF scientist. So we took about, 18 months to develop our first three products, which is the floor cleaner, the toilet cleaner, and the dishwash. So it all started with, you know, a problem, right? I was not happy with the products. And honestly, even the eco-friendly cleaners that were available, ours is, of course, a natural, um, you know, biodegradable product, which again is eco-friendly. I felt that um, they were not very effective when it came to cleaning, actual cleaning of course they have a lot of benefits you know they are gentle on the skin on the environment but you do do need something which will do the cleaning part right so that's where i i i discovered uh, these two uh, i would say unique and miracle ingredients that's that's really uh, very you uh, nice uh, you know thought of you uh, because uh, you know and you have the true entrepreneurship uh, uh, spirit uh, because business uh, can be done by anyone like uh, starting a business uh, is uh, not like everyone is aware ki ye business karna hai and all but uh, entrepreneurship is a different uh, journey because uh, you are finding some solution to a problem and you have done that so that's a true entrepreneurship uh, spirit that's a great one so uh, moving to my next question i would like to know how is the overall functioning of uh, uh, raso cleaning product as a company from start uh, like the delivery and the manufacturing how it is so I always believe, and, and you know, pardon me for saying this, but I come from a typical Banya family. <laughs> so, you know, when, when we but, think about starting a business, right? Yeah, and I've completely bootstrapped this. So I've not taken funding. I've not, uh, you know, bought in investors yet. Um, I decided early on that I'm going to make sure that I do three things, okay? One is ensuring that I have a great product. See, you know, my, my audience are going to be women and we know women, right? We are difficult to please. Right? <laughs> and we get very angry if we are not given the right product or if the price is very expensive. So I, get I, <laughs> exactly, I decided early on that my product has to be spectacular. I'm not saying that it has to be the best thing in the world, hmm. but it could certainly, certainly help women or make their life easier 
or give them effective cleaning solution, right? So that's that's the first thing. And that's the reason why I spent so much time in developing the product, in doing numerous quality checks. I made sure that I have a very good ecosystem of suppliers. Mm. So funny story, I work with a lot of top suppliers who uh, cannot manage the quantity requirements of small companies. See, they work... In, in volume, right? So they need a minimum minimum order quantity, okay. like for example, perfume. I work with Keva. They are one of the, you know, biggest and the best firms in India. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they would say that, um, ma'am, we would need 25 kgs. And, like I would beg them, I just need five kgs because, you know, what am I going to do with it? And I'm so glad that I was helped by them because had I not had good bottles, good packaging, perfumes, you know, I wouldn't have a great product. So I have them to thank. Second, of course, you have to be in an industry which is really underserved or rather, which has a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to ask you, you would be able to name only a few handful brands, right? In cleaning. Cleaning. If I were to ask you about food brands or cosmetics, you would know of so many companies, Mm -hmm. right? So that's that's what kind of surprised me that in a country with a population of 1.4 billion, why don't we have... Uh, you know, better brands, right? Why don't we have products that really address the pain points of customers? So second is being in an industry, which is, you know, in an, in a, in a, in an uprise. And as you know, yes, post COVID things have really taken a great train, uh, you know, turn and uh, people are aware of these things. And a third is, um, I would say for any business to survive, uh, you know, the the ability to create a brand so i'm in an fmcg sector right and as you would know be it a biscuit brand or a you know atta brand or or a cosmetic brand you know you buy because either you've been made aware of that product by the company that look we serve uh, you using these products so i and, and that's the reason why what i decided is that if i were to build a brand i have to make sure that i have a unique selling proposition what is different about my product, right? I mean, why should people even buy uh, Sony and Tidy Bowl? These are our two brands. Uh, there should be something different. So we worked very hard. Uh, so like I said, product quality to create something which would be unique. So vinegar and baking soda, uh, if you were to even go on to Google and just uh, type the word, you know, vinegar cleaning or baking soda cleaning, you would get hundreds and thousands of pages, you know, talking about the cleaning effectiveness, you know, efficacy of of these two ingredients. So we sort of got inspired by that. And we said that whenever we market, whenever we build our brand, we will build on a simple premise. Yeah. Um, This is what our product contains. If I were to ask you, this is an eco-friendly brand, you would have the question, okay, what does eco-friendly exactly mean? Mm -hmm. You know, what is in it? You know, so we are very transparent. We're like, you know what, this is vinegar powered. This is baking soda powered. Mm -hmm. Uh, They have these benefits. And anybody, if we make a claim that, you know, vinegar is an amazing ant repellent, and it is actually Mm -hmm. an ant and flies repellent, you can actually uh, Google it and you will see that, yes, it's supported by a lot of anecdotal as well as, you know, information out there. Because as women, we do try to use a lot of things at home too, be it salt, be it, you know, vinegar, be it baking soda. You know, we use uh, even uh, lemon, right? To to clean uh, uh, things, even toothpaste, right? So we we keep finding, you know, other solutions Hmm. compared to what's available in a bottle that you've uh, brought in. So I thought, you know, let me just, uh, you know, create this. Um, so this is in terms of, you know, what, what our philosophy, our brand, or rather a company mm-hmm. stands for. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were earlier only in physical stores. So I started with physical market. So I was not online. Oh. This was in 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I did a small pilot. I had about 3,000, 4,000 bottles made. And there was fantastic response. So I decided, you know, I'm going to sort of go full force into this. Uh, we listed with Big Basket, Grofers, and Amazon last year. Oh, so, so far, we've, you know, Touchwood done uh, pretty well. In fact, for the first eight to nine months, I actually did not spend a rupee on marketing. 
So it was completely uh, by way of, you know, just giving promotions, promotions um, mm-hmm. and, and being on the platform and, you know, just kind of giving them very attractive prices. Mm-hmm. So we, we are priced uh, very attractively compared to the other, uh, you know, eco-friendly brands. Yeah. So basically, uh, like the DIY thing, you have converted into the pro- pro- uh, no, product. Yeah, right. Actually, that's such an excellent way of putting it. Yeah. yeah. Because we women are cool. into DIY, like yeah. we, uh, we are searching for how it can be done by ourselves, my mom, uh, if, if, like any women will be like, isko hum, se kar sakte. and you yeah, have done you, that. I'm, I'm going to use this. I'm going to borrow that. I'm so sorry. I'm going to take you to just convert it to uh, DIY. Haan, by yes. so, that, that you <laughs> so that's that's really a lovely one. Uh, now I would like to know. Uh, what are your views uh, uh, like in nutshell uh, on the fmcg industry in our india like uh, how uh, like you are into this industry now so uh, what are your views on uh, the scope of work the ease of doing business how uh, the areas we need to improve as a whole country what are your views as an entrepreneur so the first question in terms of um, uh, the opportunities or rather the you know potential that uh, cleaning industry holds in general mm. is evident by the fact that if you were to look at the last 10 year reports mm. by Crystal, by AC Nielsen, you would see that this sector has been growing at a double digit rate in excess of 15, 18%. Oh. Because, you know, earlier, this was a very, you could say, like you said, you know, do it yourself sector or rather very unorganized sector, people mm-hmm. using canal, people were using Anything. acid, yes. you know, those things, even, you know, um, you could say ashes to clean dishes. Mm-hmm. However, like how in food industry, things went from loose atta to packaged atta. Mm-hmm. Similarly, this industry is going to be dominated by the organized sector within the la- in the next 10 to 15 years. Oh. So right now it's a very unorganized, small scale, medium scale industry sort of, you know, governed uh, uh, sector, but I see that changing. And of course, you know, we are a population of 1.4 billion and, you know, we are going to have a middle income and upper middle income of 400 million people. So imagine the potential, right, of building a brand. So this this sector will do exceptionally well. We might see it doubling, tripling in the next, you know, 10 to 15 years. Uh, Second is um, in terms of, you know, um, uh, how easy or difficult it is to, to, you know, set up a business. I have been been, uh, extremely lucky uh, to be based out of Mumbai Hmm. because Mumbai has a solid ecosystem. So I'm from Siliguri, uh, which is in West Bengal. Mm. So if I were to start up this business there, I would have to really, you know, kind of everything needed to come to Siliguri, right? You have to bring in the bottles, bring in the labels, few other, you know, raw materials, etc. Whereas sitting in Bombay provides you with a solid ecosystem. Mm. However, since it's still dominated by small scale and medium scale, quality always remains a challenge. So when you look at the FMCG industry, you will also find a lot of instances where there are adulteration, right, happening in food or people giving you, you know, really bad quality products, etc. Because this is dominated by small scale and they cut corners, right? I mean, if I have to save money because I'm such a small player, you know, I'll also think twice, right? Oh my God, you know, raw material prices are increasing. I used to put in 5%. I'll just put in 4%. You know, I can't increase the price. So those things happen, right? In this industry. So uh, the challenges that I faced were more in terms of procurement. Mm -hmm. So I made sure that I have a very solid set of suppliers. So I have to pay a bit extra. I have to take a lot more uh, quantity, Hmm. Uh, but I go to the bigger or the better players because I can't compromise on the quality. Plus I manufacture my own products. So FMCG companies typically outsource. They go for contract manufacturing, but quality was an issue. I I did it for for the first three, 4,000 bottles. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, yes, you know, there are people who are going to, you know, cut corners. So I decided I'm going to make that investment. I'm going to set up a small uh, unit and, uh, you know, make products that really uh, make uh, customers happy. So the unit is in Mumbai? 
Yes, yes, it's in Bombay. Yes. Okay, okay. This, uh, that's really a very nice concept. Uh, I was about to ask you the, you know, the value, the philosophy you as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, uh, take. And you have already said, like, not uh, com compromising on quality is one of them. So uh, I would like to, you know, uh, elaborate that only. Like, what are your other philosophies you believe as an entrepreneur? And uh, in this journey, you are, uh, like, firmly believing in. Yes. You know, the reason why I'm so focused on uh, quality is because so I've had the, um, um, you know, I would say I have been I've been very lucky to have worked and lived in in, in the United States. I was based out of New York mm -hmm. and I studied in France. I've, I've, I've traveled across the world. And one thing which used to really make me feel a bit, you know, bad is that um, th there are very few Indian brands like like really, really uh, quality conscious Indian brands at a global level, right? Especially when it comes to, this sector is dominated by the HULs, the PNGs uh, of the world, right? The record Benkaisers of the world. And I would always, uh, uh, and, 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 and uh, before I started this business, I actually used to import products from China. I was into home products. I used to import diffusers, home uh, beautification products, etc. you know, home decor products. Mm -hmm. And I still used to feel that tinge that, oh my God, you know, why don't I have something to call my own? Because I was still a trader, right? Bringing products, uh, you know, distributing it in India, et cetera. So this, this desire to really create a solid brand mm -hmm. is something which, you know, I cannot emphasize enough. And that, again, when you talk about brand, you cannot, you cannot not give quality, right? right. Uh, the, the whole communication should be such that people should know that, okay, this is what this product or this brand does. And uh, quality comes with that, like I, I, I mentioned. Another thing that I would like to do is, and this is something uh, which I hope to achieve, you know, once I've established my business, is also participate in some sort of, you know, policy making for the FMCG, particularly my industry. Mm -hmm. I feel that everything is quite disparate and broken in India. So what, what, what I mean by that is if you were to look at China, they've created a very solid infrastructure mm -hmm. or a solid ecosystem. So let's say I want to manufacture home cleaning products. So I need to make sure that start from the bottles, raw materials, labels, to the digital team, to even, you know, people who are going to help me in the business are sort of, you know, uh, available. But what happens in India is that you spend a lot of time as a small business uh, person trying to really do a lot of jogad. See, I know Indians are famous for jogad. Jogad. Why? Yeah, but, you know, I actually don't take that as a compliment sometimes because I feel that what it does is it makes us very short-sighted. Yeah. Because it's at the moment. But are we getting to the root of the problem? Right? So still, even today, if you look at the packaging industry of India, it's not very well developed. I still get a lot of, uh, a lot of these things from China. I pay a lot but I don't get that quality in India, right? And these are not very difficult industries to establish. So somewhere I think the government, the industry bodies, entrepreneurs like us have to kind of sit down and put together a, a certain you know, framework or a, or a policy in place you know, which, which helps entrepreneurs. And another thing is we are taxed at 18% GST, which is, as you understand, food is at five, and this is essential, right? And I'm surprised that it's been, what, um, almost more than six, seven years with the GST being rolled out. And, and still, we don't have, um, we, we have an 18% GST. Like, you know, this is, this is, this is the high, highest, highest, right? So, so these challenges, you know, kind of make it difficult. And that's the reason why, you know, a uh, number of entrepreneurs sort of give up or they cannot scale. Hmm. So either they give up or they stay stuck in a, certain uh, limit so, mm. yes and um, you know and and of course you know you uh, funding is important mm. so i am I, i'm hoping that uh, towards the end of this year i start that process we've already established a very decent um, uh, you know uh, we've done the groundwork we have a decent setup now now what it needs is you know petrol <laughs> to really light it up yeah the petrol are like now it is yes, very yes. yeah <laughs> i know, I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> so it's a it's a really challenging thing. You are expecting expensive things now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, like I I am now distracted a bit. Moving for my next question, I would like to personally mention that you are really a DIY person because I can see uh, the behind uh, you the background you have. I think so. That's a newspaper or what? Ah, uh, sorry. The background you have. Uh, the, at the oh, okay. wall. so that's a yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, I, yes, I can yes, really yes. say you are a DIY person <laughs> even the I, decoration I, I, you are doing by I, I'm obsessed with home decor to be uh, honest uh, uh, are you based nice. out of Bombay nice. you should come over you know you'll I, I have like a pretty funky setup for my uh, yeah yeah we'll home. have then one episode for uh, Miss so so Sonia uh, home decor <laughs> that yes, is yes, DIY yes. home decor <laughs> we'll have that yes yes I, I'm very fond anything which is to do with home mm -hmm. home products I I, I I, I um, you know, my, uh, Enjoy my the yeah, my passion is to really do up, I, I, just to keep it very neat and clean. So anybody <laughs> comes to my home, they're like, you know, you don't have a house help, uh, and and still you're because I during COVID, you know, we're not allowed, right? Ah, For yeah. six eight months, so they were like, how come your house is still very clean? Because I'm like, I get. I get nervous when the house is not clean. I have to pull, and I I do, and and I have tried my product so extensively that even my R and D person, Dr. Ramchandran, at one point he said, "Sony, please don't bring any more samples. Sony, please don't come with any more. You know what you want in the product because I used to be like, why isn't it cleaning this way? I want it to clean in this manner, and and you know that obsession with. Mm, I think really? women are like that, yeah. and I used to tell him like, you know, I have to sell it to women. Trust me, you know, they're very difficult to please. And when people call me up and, you know, they passionately talk about how much they love my product, you know, it is, it, it gives me so much of, uh, you know, joy mm -hmm. that I'm able to, uh, because, and, and, you know, who are my biggest uh, supporters? Surprisingly, when I started selling, uh, it, the home helps were, were the ones who were really excited, especially for my dishwash gel. They would take the food images like you know the picture and uh -huh. typically work in three four homes right so they would be like okay you know can you get this dishwash they would tell their other you know owners to buy the same dishwash uh because they of course you know uh, see you know the buyer and the user are two different people i buy and they use right mm -hmm. so i was and and that is the feedback you know which which was really encouraging because more than the owners it's actually the house help who has to like your product if okay. they don't like it they'll be like no i'm not going to use it this is bad it doesn't clean you know it is so every time anybody calls me up to say something positive about the product they are always like my house help loves it wow. and if there is something that the house help doesn't like they'll call me and tell me oh you know what sony she's saying that the toilet cleaner is not that great so i'm like okay let me do something about it you know etc yeah, yeah so we do take a lot of feedback yeah yeah uh, uh, now taking this point only i would like to know the benefits eco friendly benefits uh, uh, from you uh, about your products like uh, as you told the house help are very much satisfied so what is that one thing along with the you know eco friendly okay. one so how are they satisfied with that are uh, there uh, like one of the, the thing might be if it is a eco friendly one so i think so their hands or the skin is not affected from so yeah. like the, this kind of benefit would we would like to know from you yes so one of the things uh, so even if you were to you know this is this is information that is present everywhere about vinegar and baking mm -hmm. soda so for example if i were to give you the benefits of a floor cleaner a toilet cleaner and a glass cleaner that contain vinegar mm -hmm. what vinegar does is a it's a it's a it's a very potent cleaning uh, ingredient uh, because it's a great disinfectant. So uh, we have, we, we, we've also done a third party testing wherein mm -hmm. they have come back to us and said that your product kills 99.9% .9 germs and bacteria, but it doesn't kill any marine body. It doesn't kill any, uh, you know, it doesn't damage the soil, etc. So mm -hmm. vinegar is a nature's cleaner. It's, it's a natural cleaner. Natural. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing deodorizer. So what a deodorizer does is, agar aapke ghar mein koi smell hai. so I'll give you a simple example. So I marinate a lot of things, you know, I'll put adrak, lesson and, you know, all those, you know, garlic, ginger, mm -hmm. onion, and, you know, you put it in the fridge, you marinate kebabs and all, put it in the fridge, and then your fridge starts smelling, right? Yeah. Just take my floor cleaner, take it in a bowl, 
any bowl, katori, put it in the fridge and half an hour the smell goes away. So a lot of people tell me, Sony, even during a, a monsoon, your home doesn't smell. I said, because vinegar is a deodorizer. So you use that and you will yourself see that the odor goes away. It has its own pungent smell, right? But it goes away in five minutes. We add a lot of really high quality fragrances to ensure that, you know, the vinegar smell is masked as much as possible. It is an absolute, um, I would say, uh, extremely uh, effective agent on hard water stains, on rust, on uh, lime scale deposits. So for example, where do these things occur? They occur in your bathroom, in your toilet bowl. So vinegar, if you were to just use any, even your home cooking vinegar, you take it and add some water, dilute it. And even if you start scrubbing your bathtubs or your steel, um, you know, basins, your taps, etc., you will see that they start absolutely shining. Okay. So that's the kind of cleanliness that they give you. Yeah. So those things, you know, sort of come with our product. Yeah. Our products smell very good. And this is something time and again, customers have told us. If you see our packaging, we are not like a typical, you know, like a standard packaging, come, uh, you know, product. Uh, our packaging is really very, uh, really very uh, sleek and chic. However, our pricing is much lower than the other eco-friendly guys. Oh. Mm -hmm. baking soda again has a lot of benefits when it comes to cleaning your utensils mm -hmm. now our best seller right now is our dishwash gel Achoo. so that contains baking soda lemon extract and salt so baking soda is sort of you know it's it has this alkaline property so what it basically does is it really removes oil and grease very effortlessly Achoo. So just take baking soda. You must have it in your home because we use it a lot in cooking too, right? Just sprinkle it on any uh, 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 utensil which has a lot of, you know, like you know, the tail and, uh, yeah, yeah. and all those things and all. And then you take your normal any dishwasher and you try to, you know, uh, scrub it and you will see it comes off very easily. So that is what baking soda does. You know, it kind of extracts the grease and wo, wo surface. Hata karke. So right. that's the reason why one of the one of the things that and most of the most of the reviews that you see on Big Basket and Amazon or anywhere for us are completely organic. And one of the things they mention is that it the, the grease comes off very easily. And it doesn't leave your hand damaged. So we add a few proprietary things. These are all proprietary formulation. So even if you were to use my dishwash, no matter you wash the utensils for one hour. That's how households do, right? They, they have so much work to do. Work. Mm -hmm. Your hand doesn't get damaged. That's it doesn't thing. even feel, yes, and I have done that during COVID, right? With my yes. own product. So when we were, you know, without house help. So mm -hmm. you know, that, that, is, that is something which I would say is unique about our, uh, you know, products. It's, it's, uh, it's completely natural. Um, it, it won't harm your kids. It won't harm your, uh, you know, pets. And most importantly, it wouldn't harm people who have literally no access to healthcare. And that's your house help. You know, they, they don't have access to unka hat gaya and, you know, they have to still work, mm -hmm. right? Yes, so you, yes, you yes. don't want them to inhale fumes, right? right? Go back to their home, feed their child with the same hand which had used, you know, toxic chemicals to wash the dishes or do the, you know, mopping. So that, that, that also sort of is something that we keep right. in. And I think so this is the best uh, plus point uh, of your product uh, because uh, other uh, other things like good smelling and all is the uh, so, no, secondary thing, but the primary one, which uh, which is for health, that, and that's a great thing. Uh, yeah. Now moving to the uh, you know, second last question of the session, I would like to know how uh, the name Raso Oh, oh yes. <laughs> so I'll not uh, just go. Yes. You just uh, update how how we get dressed. Yes. So surprising. So I was looking at a few name options. The company name was not as important as the brand name, right? Yeah. So Raso is nothing but Rajiv, who's the partner in this business, and Sony. And also it's a wordplay on Rasayan. So Rasayan means chemistry in Sanskrit chemistry hmm. right hmm. so raso so this is chemistry right this all comes under you know uh, yeah, yes, etc yeah 
Our brand Sovi is soda and vinegar. <laughs> so that in a sense is what our product is made of. Oh. So it's soda, the SO baking soda is the SO and V is the vinegar. And tidy bowl is nothing but, you know, the toilet range where I wanted a name which would really demonstrate, okay, it's going to keep your bowls really tidy, you know, really, really mm -hmm. uh, neat and tidy. So, so that's, that's where so the name You are is. really inspired from our Gen Z generation who are making this trend of so it's like deep meat we have, <laughs> we have but so I'm many, so but you have, used, <laughs> you have used in the business. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm very, very inspired by, you know, so if you see the content which is there on Instagram, I'm very inspired by uh, pop culture references. So I grew up watching a lot of, uh, you know, Hollywood movies and uh -huh. reading a lot of, you know, such books. So a lot of things that I put in my content. Uh, so, for example, you must know about the movie Ghostbusters or maybe you're too young to know about it. It was a movie where, you know, it's, it's a very old movie in the 80s. I'm sure you were not even born. Um, so, you know, we, we came up with a slogan instead of ghost busters, it's someone who kind of gets rid of ghosts. Mm -hmm. So for glass cleaner, we used uh, dust busters <laughs> and we just said, just pull the trigger. <laughs> So, you know, how these two so in the movie, they, you know, they, they have like this gadget, mm -hmm. you know, when they sort of, you know, uh, extract the ghosts, etc. So I said, you know, with a glass case, like just pull the trigger and yeah. it's a dust buster. And you so, you know, these you things, you know, which I, I try to keep young. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's really very nice. You can use all this as a hashtag, uh, hashtag ghost, uh, you know, dust busters and all. Yes, yes. <laughs> and it will help you want to clean. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving uh, to the last question, I would like to know, and this is like the mandatory question I always ask to all my guests, like the message. Uh, you want to convey to all the women entrepreneurs out there you as a uh, woman entrepreneur uh, you have learned a lot from this journey so any tips any uh, kind of message you want to share with other who are budding women entrepreneurs for this uh, you know journey so i would like to say that if you were to succeed anywhere in this world as a women entrepreneur you can do that so much easily in India. I have been so blessed. Start from my, you know, uh, raw material suppliers to even my packaging label guys, people who work in my factory. I've seen that they have been incredibly supportive. And I think India is such a place, of course, you know, we worship goddesses, right? So I feel that compared to other countries that I've lived in, if a woman is really very, very serious about setting up a business in India, I think she can, can do it. Of course, you know, we are constrained in terms of, you know, taking care of our family because we are also, you know, nurturers, right? By, uh, by nature. But I feel that, you know, it's become so much easy now in India because the ecosystem in generally will support us and I never felt any different you know as a women entrepreneur in fact I felt privileged that I was getting a lot of benefits just because people were more than happy to spend a bit more time or or help me uh, probably much more than they would have done uh, with a male uh, counterpart, right? So for women, it's important that when they enter any business or any, and I'm in manufacturing, right, which you understand is completely dominated by men, they have to show that they are serious. So the person, because, you know, the other person is also conducting a business, right? Yes. So they should be able to trust you. They should uh, be absolutely sure that you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you know come through um, right they don't want to look at okay oh, oh my god is she doing the business because she's bored or is there something that she really wants to create because mm -hmm. at the end of the day we are asking them for the time and resources right okay. so we need to make sure that we when we get to them we uh, do our homework we are very clear as to what is it that we require. No kind of, you know, being indecisive or trying to say, oh, I, I might, I might not do that. Because honestly, you know, as a woman, sometimes we get so emotional and so caught up in, in, in many things. So I think that's where, you know, we have to be very firm. Okay. And uh, I, I feel that women can be really good negotiators too. So it's not like you cannot negotiate. I negotiate like crazy. I'm so resourceful. <laughs> I will be like, you know, you have to give it to me, please. 
So I think, you know, that is something, you know, uh, women should remember that is to be really absolutely committed to make sure that they convey their, uh, you know, uh, their thoughts and what is it that they want from the other person, you know, or else, or else, you know, they, they will not take us uh, yes. seriously. So the tip is to just um, um, make sure that, um, you know, you also balance other aspects of your life. Uh, I think women generally tend to get um, uh, uh, caught up with, so, you know, we don't leave office at work, we don't leave, uh, sorry, office at home, we don't leave home at office. You know, you have to compartmentalize, even if it's a really bad day, you know, see how men kind of like really switch on, switch off. Switch off. I mean, if you want to really succeed in business as a woman, I think the one quality is to be able to compartmentalize. Okay, if something bad happened at work, it shouldn't be carried to home and vice versa. You know, just kind of, you know, just, uh, uh, just, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's very, I, I think women can absolutely, absolutely succeed. Do that. Do absolutely. And we are two women, right? And yes. different uh, uh, spheres of life and uh, look at us, you know, chatting. <laughs> <laughs> And you really put up the perfect point for women entrepreneurs that we can negotiate and that means that means we can do business. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. It's so important. We are resourceful. Tell me something. Who will fight for one stem of dhaniya? Uh, oh. Better than a woman. Yeah. Right? I mean, we can negotiate like, nay, and we will take another couple of aloo and piyaz also free. Also, <laughs> So why, right? We should yeah. be in business now, you know. We should, yeah, we should yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and of course, the economy needs us. You know, it's it's important that all of us, you know, join the workforce and and contribute towards the mm -hmm. country's development. Correct. Correct. It was really great talking to you, Miss Sonia. You are such a positive person. Like oh, a very, uh, you have a very different personality and a very charming personality. I can say that. And mm -hmm. people uh, like women out there might, uh, they uh, they might have got inspired from you and i wish you uh, all the luck for your uh, this uh, journey of entrepreneurship with a great success i hope you like the conversation yes and it was such a pleasure and again i cannot thank you enough uh, for your time mm -hmm. and i do hope uh, and i do wish uh, you all the best Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. So, really, really uh, yeah, yeah. Just putting out uh, for everyone that uh, this interview is going to be on uh, social media sites of SME Venture. You can just check out on YouTube, uh, uh, the Facebook, Twitter, uh, and uh, this are this other sites. And you can also check it out on www.smeventure.com. So, I hope you like our conversation. So, stay tuned with us. Stay tuned with Rasu. You can just check out their products on the website as uh, MAM tool. So, with this, uh, this is your host, Yasmin Khan, signing out for the day. Thank you. Bye, Yasmin.